Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So we will continue our discussion on economy. Now we will be discussing about a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement. Okay, so these terms like comprehensive economic cooperation agreement, we will also see comprehensive economic partnership agreement. There is not much difference between these two. We will also see like uh, BTIA, which we have signed with uh, European Union bilateral trade and investment agreement. We will also uh, see BIPA bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement which we have signed with Netherlands okay so this is comprehensive comprehensive economic cooperation agreement okay so comprehensive economic cooperation agreement so here here instead of cooperation it is partnership so there is not much difference okay so partnership agreement so this word only changed instead of c it is p see if you see till now we have discussed about uh, regional trade agreements and in that we have talked about free trade agreement preferential trade agreement etc so all those are related to trade okay now here if you see here this is economic cooperation now what do you think which one is uh, higher if you see in magnitude uh, economic cooperation is much more than trade right so when you talk about uh, uh, trade and economic cooperation if you compare the cooperation is more that cooperation could be in anything okay so there can be different levels of cooperation one of the cooperation can be trade there can be you know policies okay the common tariff for another countries okay so different different other uh, cooperation can also be possible so between trade and cooperation cooperation is having you know more importance again if you look into uh, more than cooperation it is partnership that term itself will tell you right but cooperation and partnership all these these are actually all are almost same all are one kind of cooperation when, when we talk about BTIA bilateral trade and investment agreement this is also a kind of cooperation here bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement that is also a kind of cooperation so instead of BTIA BIPA simply if you are saying comprehensive economic cooperation agreement that is actually correct right see comprehensive economic cooperation agreement so here trade and investment agreement it is actually cooperation here investment promotion and protection agreement that is also cooperation so this we have signed with European Union this we have signed with Netherlands and here you can see CCA CEPA all are actually diplomatic words what you need to know what all things will come here there are different levels of cooperation right start from preferential trade agreement and it can be at the next level free trade agreement preferential trade agreement means we have already seen that okay then it can be a free trade agreement it can be you know customs union there can be common market okay so there can be economic union so there are five different levels of cooperation so when we talk about this so comprehensive economic cooperation agreement or comprehensive economic partnership agreement or this bilateral trade investment agreement bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement all these are just diplomatic words in all these what is actually implied what is actually implied is cooperation between two countries this is bilateral okay now if you see uh, if you, if i want i can write here uh, here uh, cooperation beyond that there can be partnership so anyway partnership is more than cooperation right when we talk about cooperation you may be cooperating but when you're talking about partnership that is more than cooperation okay then um, above that if you want you can write about integration so actually uh, you know uh, this comprehensive economic cooperation agreement or it can also be understood as partnership or even if you want you can write it as integration agreement also because there's a kind of integration okay so what are the now we will see different uh, types of cooperation starting with preferential trade agreement okay so first one we'll discuss about preferential trade agreement then we will talk about free trade agreement okay then we will talk about customs union then we will talk about common market then we will talk about economic union okay now i'll explain what are the difference between these five different levels of cooperation so if otherwise also if you need to understand these five terms what you need to do is you just need to know that these are five different levels of cooperation or five different levels of integration or five different levels of partnership so this i can actually understand in terms of 
cooperation now what you need to know is from where to where where is lower level of cooperation where is higher level of cooperation or where is lower level of integration or partnership or where is higher level of integration or partnership so if you know that order this is going to be very easy there is no need to mug up you know the definition or uh, such kind of things okay so here only thing that you need to know is this is related to cooperation so cooperation or i would write uh, partnership or uh, you can also write integration okay so these are different levels of integration or i would say different levels of cooperation or different levels of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, partnership okay now how is it going it is going like this this order so starting from preferential trade agreement where uh, if you see cooperation is slightly lesser than free trade agreement now if you compare between free trade agreement and custom union in custom union slightly more integration is there when you compare between this two uh, you know common market or you know the this this is actually having more national market will have more integration compared to custom union now this is the ultimate level of integration economic union like european union okay so even the uh, domestic policies will also be same so we will see what are the different elements in each one of this in detail but have this idea with you preferential trade agreement as the lowest level of cooperation then after that you have free trade agreement this is order then after that the next level of cooperation is custom union and the next level of cooperation is actually common market and the ultimate level of integration is actually economic union so this is how this order is going so if you need to study about these five whether it is free trade or common market or national market or economic union etc only one key word which you need to know is about any of this integration partnership or cooperation so it is all about levels of integration now what are the different elements in each of these is what we are going to see now so we will start with the first one preferential trade agreement okay so preferential trade agreement so if you are signing this preferential trade agreement the member countries will have a concessional tariff okay so here con member countries will have member countries or concessional tariff for member countries member countries will have concessional tariff concessional tariff okay so or this is also called as partial scope agreement partial scope agreement okay what is the example if you see sark okay so when sark was established sark was established in 1985 okay so uh, when it was established seven members were there then later afghan was also added so seven plus one eight members now 1985 in 1995 uh, this sapta sark preferential trade agreement okay basically to increase trade among the sark members sapta in 95 and later it was converted to safta free trade agreement so in 2006 the sapta became safta okay so similarly there is nafta nafta is between mexico us and Canada okay so this is what you mean by preferential trade agreement or you know you can also call it as partial scope agreement so it's all about concessional tariff to members now next level of integration is what you can see that is a uh, free trade agreement see as its name indicate when we talk about free trade agreement it, it means there is no tariff for members or free trade for members so free trade agreement so basically no tariff no tariff for members okay so now practically is it possible see when we talk about theoretically you can say SAFTA free trade agreement NAFTA etc and we have signed a free trade agreement with ASEAN also okay but practically it is not possible some a minimum level of tariff is actually required or will be there okay so not it will not be completely zero when we talk about free trade it is not necessarily that it will be completely zero but there will be a significant reduction and that reduction will be higher than the preferential trade agreement okay see uh, we have done almost all the videos in economy if you have missed out any of the videos you can get those videos in this uh, telegram channel or you can get in touch with me in this instagram id this is my instagram id or you can see here this is the telegram channel you can join here you'll get all my history economy uh, videos 
then these this is my instagram id or you can get in touch with me in this these two are my facebook id okay so i have this personal mentorship program the test series okay the regular classes or the online classes are there with study iq already we have we have economics we have history okay mental ability also so if you have missed out any of the lectures you can get in touch with me so here free trade agreement for example india asean free trade agreement now next level of cooperation that is custom union so if you see beyond free trade agreement you are going so in custom union one important aspect will be related to free trade so free trade will be there but higher than that something more will be there that's what exactly we need to see okay so customs union okay c u now here uh, first part will be free trade agreement that means there will be no tariff for member countries so no tariff for members no tariff for members means that's free trade agreement okay and common tariff for non members and common tariff for non members now i like first part i hope you understood second part i'll explain see when we uh, make this common tariff for non members you know what will actually happen is you can trade with more efficient countries now there is no resource distortion will be there i'll show you with example so the other countries now will buy from most efficient one okay so there won't be any trade distortion so here if you go with this this region let's suppose this is a uh this is uh, south africa custom union okay saku or let's say any custom union for example let's say three countries a b c they are part of the custom union okay now between them free trade that is the first part so first part between them it's actually free trade there is no tariff now other countries d e f so there will be a common tariff from d e f so they will impose a common tariff let's say if you import from d or e or f there will be a common tariff okay so here let's suppose d is having any item random if you take product p d is having a price of 6 rupee e is having 7 rupee f is having 8 rupee okay so here what will happen is let's say the tariff imposed is let's say 4 now this cost will be 10 6 plus 4 okay then 7 plus 4 11 8 plus 4 12 so from where you can buy a cheaper price you can actually buy from here okay so from here you can actually buy this that's what you mean by efficient uh, you can buy from efficient country so there won't be any trade distortion okay now when the trade distortion will happen suppose this is not there between them free trade is there okay now let's take different case the c have signed a free trade agreement with this f also okay so c have signed a free trade agreement with f that means there won't be any tariff with you know uh, f so c when they import from uh, you know e there may be a charge of let's say 3 rupee and from here also let's say 3 rupee okay so what will be the cost if you import from d it is 9 from e it will be 7 plus 3 10 but from f it will be 8 because you know there is no tariff right so there is no import duty so at this time from where c will buy c will buy from f but do you think f is the efficient producer of this particular item no f is the most inefficient producer then why the price is less now because of the tariff reduction because of free trade so that's why i have told you free trade may distort trade otherwise let's suppose three here also then this will become 11 then from where uh, c would have been bought c would have been bought it from this d only because the price over there is less in that case if there is a common tariff then the most efficient producer will get the advantage you can actually import from the most efficient producer there will not be any trade distortion okay so the the resource uh, distortion will also not be there so here you can see a trade diversion trade diversion otherwise the trade would have been between c and d now because of free trade the trade is actually between c and f despite the fact that f was the least efficient among these three so uh, i hope i have made this point very clear so that's how you know uh, you talk about you can understand this customs union when we talk about customs union first of all you have uh, free trade among the members like between them free trade and common tariff for non members so you will impose the common tariff 
for all non members so the advantage is the most efficient one will get the advantage or you can actually buy from the most efficient one or others will also buy from the most efficient one from this three okay others can also buy from the most efficient of this three so i hope that is clear so there won't be any resource distortion there won't be any uh, unwanted trade diversion so one of the most important uh, disadvantage of or the negative of uh, you know the regional trade agreements if you see that is trade uh, diversion okay so it is also having trade creation effect but trade diversion is one of the disadvantage okay so i hope that is clear now so how this free trade agreements or regional trade agreements can distort trade i'll show you example this this theory is actually given by you know jacob wiener two impact one is trade you know uh, diversion and one is trade creation first one i'll talk about the negative impact trade diversion so how this trade diversion will happen i'll explain here see trade diversion happens let's say uh, country a country b and country c now let's take a product px okay so let's take this product px now the price of this product is let's say 10 here and here it is 7 here it is 6 okay now imagine the situation uh, that a, a is the uh, inefficient producer here so a, a would like to import this product okay so a will uh, import this product and from here also let's say 2 is the import duty and here also 2 is the import duty so this product will cost 9 this product will cost 8 so from where you will buy in case if you need to import if the rates are common okay if the rates are same between uh, you know b and c you you will buy from c right because you'll get it at 8 rupee if you buy from uh, b you have to pay 9 rupee okay so this is the most efficient one so if tariffs are same then you will buy only from the most efficient one but imagine a situation you have signed a free trade agreement between a and b you have signed an agreement between b now there is no tariff from b so what you need to pay 7 rupee but there is a tariff from c 2 rupee so you need to pay 8 now from where you will import you will import from b so earlier when there was a common tariff you were importing from the most efficient one that was c but now because of free trade agreement you are importing from b who's actually less efficient compared to c okay so now you are importing from b so that is what i have told you there is a trade diversion otherwise the trade would have been between a and c now it is diverted to b so now the trade is between a and b why because of free trade agreement so this is one of the negative impact of free trade agreement now if you talk about a positive impact that is trade creation let's say again a b c let's say the product let's take product y the cost of this product is five rupee here it is four rupee here it is four rupee okay now imagine again the same situation 2 rupees is the uh, import duty okay if the tariff is 2 rupees so if you import from c it will cost 6 if you import from b it will cost 6 why because 2 rupee import duty is there tariff is there so a is having 5 rupee cost only so do you think a will import now so there is no import that means there is no trade now imagine a situation you have signed a free trade agreement between b now what will happen so this product from b will cost 4 okay but in a it is five so it is better to import so what actually happened here it created trade otherwise there was no trade between a and b or a and c now it created trade this because of this free trade trade created okay so actually this free trade agreements uh, are having this positive as well as negative impact trade diversion and trade creation so that's what i've told you in case of customs union when we have discussed it actually prevents that resource distortion okay because you are imposing common tariff for non-members so i hope you understood what will be the impact when common tariff is imposed most efficient will get the benefit or you will buy from the most efficient one and others will also buy from the most efficient among you okay so i hope that is clear now next level uh, of integration so after this what we need what we need to discuss we will see the order here so first uh, we have talked about uh, PTA done, free trade agreement done, customs union done. Now we'll talk about common market. Okay, so next is actually common market. Common market. Now see in common market, sometimes you'll see single market. You will see single market or uh, you know national market. All are actually 
same okay so single market or national market now if you see here uh, i've told you the integration is slightly higher than customs union so the features of customs union will be here what are they free trade will be there and there will be common tariff for non-members so i'm just writing custom union here in addition to that what is there is what we are going to discuss now plus no restriction on movement of labor and capital earlier this was not there there was a free trade okay and there is a common tariff for non-members so that's what you mean by custom union two provisions free trade and common tariff common tariff for non-members okay now here what is added is uh, there will be no restriction on movement of labor and capital okay so no restriction on movement of labor and capital for example if you see EFTA okay so this is an example of common market or Benelux 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 means uh, you know this is Belgium Netherlands Luxembourg so Benelux now what do you mean by this Benelux Belgium Netherlands Luxembourg so three countries are part of common market what does this mean between them between them there is free trade as we have discussed now there will be common tariff for non-members so for non-members if you need to buy something from def there will be common tariff so what is the advantage we have already discussed when we discussed about custom union now what else is there no restriction on movement of labor and capital so between them if there is a if there is no restriction on movement of labor and capital you can move from here to here the job visas between them everything there is no restriction I hope this is clear now if you remember uh, when we discussed about GST I have told you GST will create common market in India in which context I have told you this see if you take if you take let's say this is India and different states A B C D E these are different states okay now for this time being you just assume that this A B C D E are countries different countries now in which context I have told you GST will enable a common market is like this see as of now if you consider A B C D E as countries is this available no restriction on movement of labor and capital can you move from one state to other there is no restriction right so this is applicable now now what about common tariff for non-members so these are the members right non-members means outsiders like pakistan like nepal like sri lanka like usa like canada etc these are what you mean by non-members because we are treating these as countries okay so is there a common tariff for non-members yes for importing there is a common tariff for non-members okay so common tariff for non-members so this is this is uh, okay common tariff is there this is also satisfied but what about free trade among them among them is there a free trade can we say that actually a different state having different taxes right so that so that because we cannot we cannot actually say free trade among the states different taxes there in different states so when gst comes there will be a uniformity so we can say free trade among them if these are countries uh, different taxes are there if there is no gst i am assuming these are countries but gst will make this thing uniform that's why i've told you gst when we discussed about gst this will actually convert india into a common market okay or national market the reason is these two elements are already there free movement of people labor capital etc is there common tariff for non-member means with other countries there is a common uh, tariff now only thing is this different states have different tax till then now there will be a common tax so I hope this is clear. Now, what is the next level of integration? Next level of integration is actually economic union. Economic union, okay? So our economic and monetary union. Economic and monetary union, okay? See here, uh, there will be addition from what? Common market. So what all features are there in common market will be here also plus there will be a common domestic policies domestic or economic policies or monetary policies okay so common market what all elements what are the three elements in common market free trade among members then no common tariff for non-members then no restriction on uh, movement of people plus common domestic policies okay common 
domestic policies when i'm talking about domestic policies i'm talking about you know the uh, industrial policy or the monetary policy etc all these will be same so for example european union if you see between the countries of european union there is a free trade so the first part is there then the common tariff for non members that is there between them movement of people is free and they have a common uh, domestic policy or monetary policy okay so we have uh, before we have discussed about banking we have talked about uh, european central bank etc okay european parliament everything we have discussed in the uh, uh, the chapter in the chapter of banking we have discussed in detail so that's an example so european union how many members are there uh, 28 was there but uk is now out so 27 members are there what about eurozone how many members are there eurozone uh, 17 members are there what is the difference between european union and eurozone we have discussed this when we discussed about eurozone crisis we have discussed in detail so actually uh, uh, the 17 members have euro as their currency so basically those european union countries who's uh, who's following euro as their currency is part of eurozone now is uh, do you think only eurozone members are having euro as currency no four other countries also have euro as currency all those things that we have discussed already i'm not getting into that so this is what the highest level of economic integration right so it's almost similar to a country except sovereignty so the countries have their own sovereignty is there but everything else this is the highest level of integration okay so i hope you understood so when we talk about uh, ceca cepa there is no point in you know discussing all those things separately all these are diplomatic words so when you are seeing signing ceca or cepa or btia bpa etc it's all about different levels of integration different levels of cooperation and these are the five levels of cooperation that you can see in any of this so first one or from, let's go for the last one from the last one economic union is the highest above that or below that common market below that customs union below that free trade agreement and below that preferential trade agreement if you go in this order you need to tell above that preferential trade uh, trade agreement is the lowest free trade agreement is the second uh, above that then customs union then you have common market and economic union so this order is what you need to remember this is the level of economic cooperation next session we will talk about you know mega regional trade agreements we'll talk about rcep regional comprehensive economic partnership okay trans pacific partnership etc all, all these will be covered in the next session so that's about the session uh, i hope you understood everything that we have discussed today if you have any doubt in any of the videos that we have discussed so far you can get in touch with me here that's my instagram id okay or you can join the telegram channel you will get all my videos over there everything is there or you can see here this is a telegram channel or uh, this is the instagram id these two are my facebook page you can get in touch with me in any of this if you want to learn economy with me or history with me or general studies any subjects you can if you need regular classes you can get in touch with me or the online classes are available with study iq you will get all those classes still you will get my youtube videos in this telegram channel okay so i hope you understood everything that we have discussed so see you guys thank you